The voice you heard just now belongs to Pablo Escobar. You might be thinking, surely there couldn't have been anyone more perverse, bloodthirsty, and cold-blooded than Pablo Escobar in the Medellin cartel. You can be wrong. There were men working under him that were far, far worse. Violence, torture, murder. This was the reality that Colombian citizens were forced to live in during the 1980s and the early 1990s, day in, day out. Some people would leave their homes wondering miserably if they would ever return. But more than that, there were some names that would make people tremble. Because it was these deadly hitmen that made the Medellin cartel what it was, an instrument for power. Escobar might have been the one pulling the strings, but it was his Sicarios that spread his reign of terror. So, let's dive into the lives of some of the deadliest hitmen that dominated the Medellin cartel's operations at the height of its power. John Gyro Velasquez, Popeye. No discussion is ever complete on the Sicarios without the mention of John Gyro Velasquez, or as he was once known, Popeyes. He calls himself a dreamer. A man who dreamed of guns and violence. He was once a part of the Colombian National Police before he gave it all up to work for Escobar. When it came to hitmen obeying orders, none came as close as this man, whose tales of torture are as chilling as they could get. The worst part is that he would call himself a professional killer, a man that was simply doing what he was told. He was perhaps Escobar's most trusted hitman, who, at the height of his notoriety, was paid one million dollars for each high-profile murder. De paso, briosos. It is a killer without remorse, and Popeye had none to spare. Popeye has confessed to personally killing 300 people at Escobar's request, and giving orders for 3,000 more assassinations. He was also behind one of the greatest terrorist attacks Escobar was known for, the 1989 Avianca plane attack. This attack was to kill one presidential candidate, Cesar Gaviria. While reading about the Avianca plane attack, you could tell Popeye was cold, cutting, and deeply, insanely, and intrinsically methodical. This was a man that never dared to leave anything to chance. Here is how he broke down the attack. The cartel members convinced a young guy on the plane to open a suitcase that the cartel had planted. They told him that it had a recorder that would secretly record conversations. The young person opened the briefcase. Once he realized that what it contained was dynamite and not a recorder, it was too late. The young person was already blown to bits. Popeye describes this explosion as a domino effect. It was the fuel in the wings of the dynamite in the suitcase and the pressure in the aircraft that made this deadly combination. Simple, but effective. But you haven't heard the most shocking part yet. The man they had sought out to kill, Gavidia, was never even on that plane. But the 101 people who boarded the flight were. They were all killed midair. For the Colombian nation, this was a national tragedy. But for Popeye, the explosion was a work of art. That wasn't the only high-profile terrorist case he was involved in. Popeye, as you can see, had quite a repertoire. He was involved in the assassination of the 1989 presidential candidate Luis Carlos Galán who had always deeply detested Escobar, and Escobar detested him. Galan had been growing pretty bold with his threats since the campaigns started, promising his voters that the first thing he would do from behind the president's desk would be to extradite Escobar to the US. Popeye had orchestrated his murder, which was done on a stage in public right in front of his supporters. If there was one thing you need to know about Popeye, it is this. He enjoyed putting up a good spectacle. Eventually, he was arrested in 1993 and spent 20 long, hard years behind bars. Though he was released in 2014, it turned out that old habits die hard and he was soon enough back behind the prison walls on charges of extortion. In the last years of his life, Popeye had grown into somewhat of a social media celebrity, recounting tales of his torture with the comfort of a man who slept a bit too soundly at night. Dandini Munoz Mosquera, La Cuica. But there are even more sinister hitmen than Popeye. Dandini Munoz Mosquera, or as his allies would call him, La Cuica, was only 12 years old when he, along with his brothers, joined the Medellin cartel to escape their poverty. At first, he stole motorbikes. Then, he began killing people. And before anyone know it, he was trained to become one of the rarest forms of killers, those that shot a bullet in their victim's skull in the name of their drug lord and in the name of money. He became one of Escobar's most trusted assassins. For La Cuica, it was all about the cash. When Escobar announced a $4,000 cash payment, to 
when a Medellin cartel member who killed a police officer or a civil servant, La Cuica was ready to get his hands dirty. ¿Cuántas personas reconoce usted haber asesinado? A ninguna. Maybe he never publicly confessed to his crimes, but he always, without fail, left his mark. The 220 people he has personally killed all had two letters engraved deep into their own skin when their bodies were discovered. KK. A purposely misspelled variant of his name. It was his way to announce that this was his kill and staking a claim on his payment. But La Cuica didn't just kill, he trained others to become killers. At the height of the Medellin cartel's power, he trained thousands of impressionable young people into becoming killing machines for one man, Pablo Escobar. La Cuica personally trained 140 young boys and girls who, just like La Cuica, were destitute and desperate to escape poverty. It was a dangerous business, recruiting the most desperate and hungry of children and turning them into seasoned killers. And La Cuica excelled at this job. Perhaps the worst part of it all. Up until 1991, La Cuica paid nothing for his crimes. Listen to him insisting that the authorities who arrested him had absolutely no reason to do so. In the moment that they arrested me in 1991, in reality, there were plenty of accusations. But he was a man who knew how to walk away with a clean slate. One time, he paid half a million dollars to have his prison records expunged. And just like that, La Cuicas, the man who had killed hundreds of people, was just as much of a law-abiding citizen as some guy living next door. It was this miscarriage of justice that allowed bloodthirsty criminals like La Cuica to roam free on the streets. Once, he was given multiple multiple life sentences and locked up in the US's most secure prison called ADX, things looked pretty bleak for him. John Gyro Arias Tascon, Penina. But La Cuica wasn't the only young, impressionable child plucked from the streets. One of them was also John Gyro Arias Tascon, aka Penina. This man joined the cartel at the age of 15, and according to some reports, he was hired by Escobar himself. The reason? It turns out that one time, Penina had stolen a music player from one of Escobar's cars. Rather than being infuriated, Escobar was impressed. Some might say that Escobar saw a bit of himself in Penina, but Escobar wasn't known for his sentiments. He was known for his calculated mind. Panina had links with other kids in similar poverty as him, and he managed to recruit members into the cartel. So how influential was Panina, you may ask? Well, Panina was the biggest of Escobar's hitmen, ranked fifth in the cartel, and led an entire criminal group under the Medellin cartel's wing. This group was called the Los Pricos, and it would haunt Colombia for years to come. He was behind some of Medellin's cartel's most famous assassinations, Lara Bonilla, the Avi airplane attack, the 1989 bombing of the DAS building. This man walked with blood on his hands like it was a medal. If I were to list his victims, perhaps we would be here all day. Jamie Ramirez Gomez was mercilessly shot to death in front of his family on November 17th, 1986. It was all Panina's doing. Antonio Roldan Betancourt was blown to bits when the car next to his exploded. It was 4th of July, 1989. Guess who planted the bomb? Penina. Valdemar Franklin Quintero was shot 115 times on 18th of August, 1989. Penina was behind the attack. The list goes on and on. There are countless more tales of these deaths at the hands of Penina, including those of policemen, colonels, and government officials. Carlos Mario Alzate Urquijo, Arete. But who was this blackie? Carlos Machio Alzate Urquigi, aka Arete, was a strange figure on his own. Guess what his very first service for the Medellin cartel was? Maybe something like small theft? Maybe blackmail? Torture? Not quite. His very first assignment was to help with a massive 1989 bombing of the DAS building. He worked for Escobar for 10 years and soon became one of his most trusted hitmen. Carlos was born to a poor African family and emigrated to Colombia when he was very young. During operations in the cartel, he earned his nickname Arete, which translated to the earring. Carlos was so deeply trusted by Escobar that he was made responsible for the security of the cartel. Carlos was a natural-born killer. He was the sinister mastermind behind some of the biggest attacks by the Medellin cartel. So formidable was his presence in the Medellin cartel that his own family was killed by the Los Pepes in hopes that this would devastate him beyond repair. 
but that never stopped him. He organized attacks against the 1993 Bogota Commercial Center and explosions against the pharmacies owned by the Rodriguez slash Irajuela brothers in 1993. In total, reports state that Carlos had killed almost 3,000 civilians. He was also the one that planted the bomb in the suitcase and placed it on the Avianca flight. Despite this, Carlos was a walking contradiction of a man. While he was scheming away the deaths of thousands of innocent people, he was also providing homes to the homeless, giving jobs to the unemployed, and providing security to the vulnerable. So well known was this side of Carlos's character that it earned him the title of the Golden Sicario. One thing's for sure, it really is a strange world we live in. Perhaps the strangest part of it all is that though the crimes of these men are revolting, chilling, and terrifying, they came from a childlike need to impress and please their boss, Pablo Escobar. Watch an interview with Popeye and notice his admiration for a terrorist like Escobar. For most of these men, who either came from poverty or desperately needed a purpose in life, Escobar was their savior. So, until the day they died, with every single innocent life they took, they still saw Escobar as their hero and nothing less. Thank you for watching this video, and we will see you in the next one. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye for now.